Okay, so installing the fan kit. Uh, whether you're doing it with the kit or, or with the rest of the adventure wagon kit or you've just bought the solo fan kit uh, it starts with the fan ring that we showed you earlier and like I said there is a edge of this that's rabbited out and we actually flip it down so that it's facing the bottom and you'll notice there's a little notch in the center of this fan ring here and here on the front and back that goes to the aft and forward side of the vehicle and you'll line them up with the center of the vehicle. And the way I do that is there's actually a little center hole right here on this flange. So just line it up with the center of that. And take your pen and mark the corners. And once your corners are marked, you can pull the fan ring down and what I use, use is the step bit that you'll use in several operations for installing the rest of the kit. But you can also just use a, a, a drill bit that's large enough to get your, um, your jigsaw blade into. And drill the corner out of each of the holes so you can slip your uh, jigsaw in from the top and cut. All right. so. Be sure you wear your safety glasses for this operation. Metal is going to be flaking off and you do not want to get that in your eye. And it's, as an option, you know, to, to center your drill bit, you can use a little uh, punch. This one's a spring-loaded punch that Jared and Nathan brought from Mammoth Vans. And it's kind of handy to put exactly where you want your uh, drill bit to be centered. And I step back from that corner half the distance of the width of my hole, meaning the hole is going to grow in a radius. So I usually step back about a quarter inch because I know that I want about a half inch hole. And the good thing about the step bit is you can be pretty close to that hole size. And if you're a little bit off, you could just go to the next level with the step bit until you reach both sides of, of that, uh, of the mark that you made. The side, don't worry about it. If, it, if there's a, a, a radius on that side, it will not interfere with putting the fan ring in. So the key on this operation is, is you can be a little bit wider than that mark but you don't want to be less than that mark because the fan ring will not slip in you're going to be doing a lot of grinding and the 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 grinding the metal away is much more difficult than when than when you make the original cut and there's plenty of room on the flange of the fan to uh to compensate for going over the line a little bit so right here i'm just barely kissing the line. So I'm going to step it through one more time to oversize it just a little bit and that'll give me plenty of room for my blade. Right there. So if you can see it's just barely overlapping the, uh, the corners of the lines I just made. Good idea to wear a turtleneck if you have one. <laughs> that is hot shavings. So again, that's the eye protection is essential. All right. So I'm going to do one more step, a little bit more on this one. And there you go. And again, that's the beauty of using the step bit. You can just keep growing it until you reach the, uh, the edge of the lines that you made. Once you drill out the four corners, we'll move up to Jared on the roof and he'll explain uh, the installation of the, the top part of the fan. All right, so here we are on top of the roof, um, on the roof of the Sprinter here. 
Uh, you just saw Chad show you how to punch the holes uh, from underneath to get you started for the fan cutout. Uh, we'll talk about first how I'm able to be up here sitting on the roof. Um, these roofs are very flimsy, very flexible. You absolutely do not want to be stepping or walking across this with your body weight at any point. Uh, well, I'm sitting on a platform that we fabricated at our shop to put the weight over where the factory roof rails run, which is where the weight is meant to be taken. Um, at the bare minimum, you would lay down some packing foam, uh, very thick, like I'm sitting on, and maybe put two by four, uh, sorry, plywood on top of it, uh, would be the absolute bare minimum you would use to spread your load across the van. Uh, you could use sections of two by two with a piece of plywood on top to keep you elevated, uh, which is similar to what you see here. We have um, sticks of wood going where the roof rails would be and a ply um, platform on top, so I'm actually not touching the roof of the van at any point. My weight's all the way to the side. That's the only proper way to be on the roof. Once you're up here and you've got yourself a nice secure platform that you can set behind the fan, we can start working on uh, getting this hole cut in the fan here, or in the ceiling here. So, um, I'm looking at the four holes that Chad punched uh, below, and uh, depending on the quality of the step that you've used, this one gets sees a lot of shop time. Uh, so sometimes you'll push it through and you'll see um, spent sheet metal and we want to clean that up before we start cutting our lines. If you have a brand new step bit, you probably won't have this. Uh, so I'm just going to run the drill bit right back down, uh, applying light pressure to clear up the deeper the edges while I'm doing that. So now I've got a clean hole, um, no burrs, and I'm going to go ahead and do that on all three of these all the way around. Now I've got four clean holes and I just need to prep the surface. Uh, I've got a little brush up here. Um, if you have compressed air, uh, that can work too, but we just want to lightly move the metal shavings that we've created uh, away from the surface that we're going to be cutting to protect the paint. Uh, so as we get these cleaned up, then we'll be able to create our lines. Now, uh, we're cutting a square. And the easiest way that we have found to do this, I'd like to call it a pro tip, I suppose, uh, instead of getting a square or a straight edge and drawing perfect lines, uh, we know that below our holes were punched with the lines that we traced. So the outside edge, outside diameter of the holes are gonna be the outside edge of the hole we need to cut. So I'm just gonna use some tape uh, for two reasons. I'll simultaneously protect the van uh, from the jigsaw running across it. Uh, and I will also be able to create myself a straight edge uh, for which to follow with the jigsaw blade. Piece is a little too small. So, as mentioned, the outside edge of the holes is going to create my line. So I can take the edge of the tape, set it right on the back of that hole, line it up with the next one, and I've created myself a straight edge. So essentially we're just connecting the dots. The center piece is what's getting cut out, so we don't need to focus on it. The outside edge of the van is still going to be here, so the tape protects that. Create my next connect the dot. On to my last one. That's the easy way to get, a, get yourself a nice clean square to cut. Now I'm going to switch over to my jigsaw blade here and get to doing what's often referred to as one of the scariest parts of the build. It's cutting a gigantic hole into the top of your sprinter. Got my safety goggles here. Again, we're gonna have uh, tiny little pieces of hot metal flying everywhere, so definitely make sure you put your safety glasses on. Uh, I've learned the lesson one too many times. Um, you can really start on any edge you want, depends on where you position yourself uh, to the fan or what you're comfortable with. I like to start on the back line. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that first. I'm gonna use the jigsaw blade and rest it against this back edge of the hole I've created, and then start running straight to the back edge of the other hole along the tape line that I just used.
As you can see, I've got a fantastic straight line from hole to hole. I do that three more times and this thing's gonna come out. As I cut my second line, uh, really easy. I just cut one of the uh, wings off of the box that the fan came in and you can use this while you're up on the roof after you've cut another line to slide it underneath and keep this from falling down. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut my second line here. Another nice, really good looking line. If your hole's big enough, you can reach your finger in there and just pull up the corner that you just cut. Slide your cardboard underneath and now you can keep pressure with your jigsaw as you cut the line and it'll prevent this from falling through the van. Before I cut my final line, I'll readjust the cardboard to completely hold it underneath. Now I'll cut that fourth line. Now you got yourself a nice big hole in your fan hole in the roof of your van there. Nice square piece, good square hole, and while you're here, you can immediately test fit to make sure the fan shroud fits. We've got great fitment here. Still have sheet metal underneath all our screw holes. We're ready to move on to the next phase. All right, so now that we've got the hole cut in the roof, uh, we can go for uh, getting the placement of the holes that actually hold your fan adapter to the roof of the uh, van. Um, we place this in here and you can see we've got some play. That's totally normal and actually a good thing. Chad mentioned oversizing those holes a little bit, not wanting to be small because you want to make sure this piece will fit in here. Uh, and you've got play between the hole and the inside edge. So the fact that this moves around is totally fine. Um, I like to think about the way the van spends most of its time moving, which is forward. So I will seat this ring all the way to the back and I will get it to fall right in between these two raised edges of the roof. This is the position I want to lock it in and draw all my holes out so they're in the same spot when we actually go to tape it down. So I just like to use a couple pieces of tape. I'll start by just pulling it back onto the roof couple pieces on the edge to hold it in place side to side. And then I'll do one on the front to make sure this thing doesn't move around on me while I'm drilling holes. I'll also be holding it. Now you can see that's nice and snug in, in place so it's not going to move. Uh, the hole size that you want to drill for these is 3 uh, so you throw a 3 16 drill bit in there. I like to usually use some body weight and lean over this thing to help it from moving also. Um, the tape should do a pretty good job if you just move your hand around with it. But I'm gonna go ahead and lean on some of these. And for the first part of it, uh, from the top, I'm gonna start to drill uh, just to mark a hole on each one of these. Uh, and I won't drill all the way through. Then I'll remove and punch the holes the rest of the way through. So it looks something like this. Start to drill a little bit. Medium to hard pressure. All the way around. And these will be traced holes that you can then just drive the drill bit straight through after we pick it up. Now that I've hit all the holes, we can go ahead and pop this up, set it out of the way, and you'll notice 
I've got pre-drill all the way around and that's where I can just lean into the bit and punch my holes. got all my holes drilled I'm gonna go ahead and clean the roof off and from underneath uh, after running the drill bit through the top you'll have some metal shavings poking out from underneath uh, before you paint it's good we like to run the step bit again up through the bottom just with light pressure to clear off any of the metal shavings then we're gonna move on to protecting the edges by painting and then we'll be on to seating the fan ring uh, with the adapter that comes in the adventure wagon kit all right, so we've got the uh, 3 16 holes we just drilled uh, for the fan ring uh, deburred from below. Uh, the main edge, take any metal file, uh, grinder, whatever you might have, and just deburred this outside edge all the way around. Doesn't need to be too pretty, you just don't want anything snagging. Get the corners. Now once we have everything deburred, uh, we want to go ahead and seal. We've got a raw steel edge which will rust and corrode, so we need to seal that to prevent it from happening. Um, in every kit that uh, you buy, you should get a little bottle of uh, anti-corrosive sealant, uh, which is what we have here. And we want to touch up all the holes and the uh, broad edges uh, of everything we just cut. So we go around, take that sealant. Um, you can do as many coats as you desire. Uh, as long as you apply the first one thick enough, it should be enough to seal the edge. Uh, you can wait for it to dry or set up a little bit and apply multiple coats if you so desire. Uh, and once we have all these holes painted and sealed, you're gonna let everything dry uh, before moving on to the next step, which will be placing the fan ring. Uh, and getting it taped up for final fan installation. <laughs> Rolling. All right, so now that we've got all the metal edges uh, and where the 3 16 holes are deburred, filed, sealed, and we've had, uh, given it some time to dry, we're gonna go ahead and seat the fan mounting ring along with the uh, Adwag adapter piece that'll go on the inside of the van. Uh, this is easier with two people, so you can just have someone from underneath hold the adapter while you drill screws into it. Uh, drill screws into it. Uh, but I'm going to show you a way to do it uh, if you're having to install the fan by yourself. Uh, so now that we have the hole prepped, we can drop the fan ring into the, into the van. Uh, we're in the forward fan position here. And Chad showed you earlier that you just butt this front edge up against uh, the lip on that second rib. So the orientation of this uh, adapter ring, once we're actually installing the fan, isn't as critical. We still like to have uh, the notched edge facing to the floor uh, so that when we're drilling screws we have a nice smooth broad edge. Uh, if you're installing this on the rear position, which I'm sure we will mention once more, uh, you would actually have it with the notched edge up and this flange overlapping uh, the flange on the rear. But on this forward one, uh, you're going to be okay either way. Uh, we just like to have the flat edge up. So as I drop this through, well, uh, we can set the fan ring and then drop this through. Uh, the fan ring here, uh, the orientation is very important. You want to make sure the mounting screws are on the sides, not front and back. So you want to drop this fan mounting ring with mounting screws uh, to the left and the right as that's the proper fan orientation when that gets screwed down. So with that in place, you can bring up the fan, uh, fan ring from underneath and then use your C-clamps to hold the rear edge and then
one on the front edge, and now you're hands free. You've got uh, the Adwag fan adapter ring on the inside, snugged up, uh, and your Maxair fan on the outside. As I mentioned before, you're going to want to line up your screw holes. So once you have it here, you may need to adjust left, right, front, and center, which I do need to do. So I'm going to loosen these a little bit and allow myself to creep this over to where I now have all my holes perfectly aligned. I'm just floating in the center of the raised ribs. I'm all the way back so I have a clear shot through the holes to drill into the adapter ring. Uh, in the kit, you're gonna find plastic bags with the hardware. Uh, these screws are what we'll put through the ring to, to mount it. And there's four of them remaining in here which will actually mount the fan at the very end. So we can go ahead and get our screws out. And we've got two different sizes in here. It's pretty easy to figure out. Uh, you've got a shorter screw that's fatter in diameter and a longer screw skinnier in diameter. You only have four of the shorter ones and these are the ones that hold the fan on the side. You've got, uh, let's see, 16 of your long ones and these are the ones we're gonna set right through here. I'm gonna begin setting these screws uh, by going closest to where I have a C-clamp holding so I have all the pressure and I'm not gonna push the, the ring down. Um, you can start anywhere you like. I usually like to start right there. Now, when you set a screw, uh, I've done it enough times to know the feel. Um, you can strip out the adapter ring if you try and screw through it too far. Um, it is a somewhat soft material, but it's dense enough to hold the screws. So you want to make sure that as you get to the very end of driving the screw, uh, that you either lighten up in pressure or feel the pressure uh, as it uh, fights against you to then stop. And you can either snug it up by hand or if you're very familiar with your drill, um, keep going until you feel just a little bit of back pressure and then you can stop. And sometimes you can hear it, you may hear it in the video. Uh, you hear the tone pitch high down to a little bit low. That's where it's giving you resistance and that's about the sweet spot of where you want to stop. Uh, often you will just barely feel the tip of the screw having come through the bottom of the adapter ring. Uh, you know you've got a pretty good depth. You'll notice uh, as I screw away from the C-clamps I'm using my hand to hold the wood uh, and give it a little back pressure so the screw doesn't push it away from the van. We've got the hole cut. Everything's been sealed. We've got the fan factory adapter ring mounted with the screws to the adventure wagon adapter ring on the inside. Everything is super firm, nice and secure. You can see it's taken all the give out of the room from the hole that you just cut. We're ready for the last step. Fan adapter's mounted onto the most important part, which is uh, laying down the sealant tape. Now, there's a few steps in here that you wanna make sure you do in order, uh, in order to ensure that you don't have any problems down the road. Uh, the application of the sealing tape is by far the most important aspect of this, uh, and there's a good way to do it to make sure you lay it down nice. Um, the first thing we want to do is clean up uh, any of the junk that we've laid down, tape residue, anything like that, uh, oil from your hands, sweat dripping everywhere. We want to clean that off the perimeter. So acetone, mineral spirits, something like that, we just need to use a little bit of it um, on the actual fan trim ring itself, as well as uh, about the thickness of the tape out from the fan ring. Uh, that's the edge we, we want to have clean um, so when we lay down the primer that it sticks nice and strong. So just work your way around, clean up those edges. And just like everything else when you're done, you want to make sure it has a little bit of time to dry. You don't want to lay down primer or the tape over uh, wet acetone, fresh acetone. So give it a chance to dry uh, before you go ahead and do that. Uh, acetone dries very quickly, so you don't normally have to wait very long. Once that's down, uh, the next step would be to apply the primer. Uh, the Adventure Wagon Kit, they include all the primer that you need. 
Uh, it's a 3M product called Primer 94. Um, these sticks are super important for allowing uh, the adhesive tape uh, its best chance to stick. If you apply the tape without applying the primer first, uh, it's way easier uh, to separate from the van surface and over time it's, it's going to fail uh, rather quickly. You can't forget to apply the primer, so make sure that you do this after the acetone is dried. Uh, we want to go ahead and apply the primer. You have three sticks, so it's best to try and lay down one stick across the third, second stick across the third, the last one across the last third. The way these work, uh, there's a little uh, black dot on them. You'll squeeze that and crush it, and you'll hear it when it's crushed. Uh, that means the primer is flowing. Um, it does dry up, so you want to do this in a relatively quick manner. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do the first one. Uh, it breaks out in thirds if you were to do a whole side plus one section. Uh, you can do that and get all the way, even thirds all the way around. So I'm going to go ahead and crush the stick. You'll hear it, and then I'm off to applying the primer. Again, I want to make sure I apply the primer uh, on the fan adapter ring itself and enough to the outside edge to make sure it clears all the way um, where the tape is going to be applied. I need primer on all of that surface. So this is what it's going to look like. Crush, and now I'm flowing. And I want to try and cover every exposed piece that I can, including the edge, and again, out to where I know the tape is going to be, to make sure I've got maximum adhesion for that tape strip when it lays down. Cover the uh, button heads of the screws, every surface where you know the tape is going to touch. Uh, it's good to apply the primer to make sure it's going to stick really, really well. That's one of the key components of how you ensure the tape lasts a really long time, if not forever. So, first sticks down, I've got a third done. I'm going to move on to the second third. Crush, primer's flowing. Get those button heads all the way out here. Second, third's done. Another thing to note, once the, once the primer's applied, you don't need to worry about it anymore. It's, it's going to dry, and that's actually what you want. Uh, so as you're doing this, you'll notice the sheen that you're laying down starts to disappear and it dries up. Uh, that's telling you you're, you're in good shape. Uh, that's what you're looking for. It does help not to touch the surface once you've primered it so you don't introduce any new film or barrier uh, between the nice primer that you've just laid down and the tape strip when you apply it. So try to stay off of that surface, the prime surface, once you're done. So there I've got the primer applied all the way around. This whole edge is ready to accept the tape. Now that we're onto the tape, uh, this is definitely the most important part. How you lay the tape down is going to dictate, uh, be a pretty critical component of how long it lasts. Uh, you can see up here, we're dealing with some raised edges. Um, tape loves to lie flat, so when you introduce edges to it, it's going to bend and move the tape. That's okay to an extent, you just want to relieve any pulling or pressure as much as you possibly can. Um, this tape has a backing film on it, so as you go to lay it down, it will actually prevent you from pulling it or stretching it. Uh, only when you start to remove that back edge uh, will the tape become a lot more pliable. You want to avoid doing that uh, before you've laid the tape down. Uh, the intention is not to stretch the tape as you apply it. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start on the back edge. The reason you want to start on the back edge uh, is an added precaution. If you think of uh, shingling a house or, or a roof, um, the rain and 
any weather is mostly going to come from the front and go to the back. So as you apply the back strips, the side ones will lay over top of your rear so the weather goes across the back as well as the front strip will lay on top of your sides, creates a shingle effect which better helps repel weather uh, over the long term. So I'm on the back of the fan hole, I'm going to start with the back. Now as I prepare the tape, uh, I like to roll it uh, into a roll. Now if your hands are fairly clean, you can touch this and not affect it too much. Uh, but I like to peel off the back edge of the tape and start to create a roll. So as I roll the tape, I've got a much more user-friendly way to apply this to the fan cutout. And now I'm going to show you my pro technique for applying the tape. Uh, I like to start in the corner. Uh, some people have tried to start in the middle and then you're trying to stretch tape out both ways. You get away from yourself, it's hard to lay it down flat. If you start from an edge and work your way across to the other edge, you can control the tape the entire time. So as I begin, um, I know that I want to clear as much as tape as I have going wide. Uh, you'll be on the outside edge, outside edge of the tape on both sides. So I know about how much space I need to start from. So giving myself that much room to work with, I'm going to go ahead and press this tape right onto the top of that button head screw and work my thumb all the way around it to seal that screw in. And then I'm going to work my way down to the bottom edge. So as I push and seal, there's a good example of how sticky that tape is. Uh, as soon, about as soon as you touch this to the surface of the van, that primer wants it to stick forever. Um, so try to keep it off the surface of the van. Um, I'm also using the inside edge of the flange, uh, outside edge of the flange, to guide the edge of the tape. So that's my starting perimeter. Then I'm going to work my way down onto the edge and draw a line across. And then I'm going to seat this whole back edge before I move forward. So I'm going to use my thumb and go around the corner of the fan flange. And then I'm going to work back and forth, making sure I don't get any air bubbles all the way out to the outside of the tape. Now this whole corner is super sealed. I've got it pressed all the way around the radius. The button head is sealed. And now I can start working my way all the way across the fan edge. I start from the top and I press it all the way up to the next screw head. This whole edge is nice, flat, and sealed. Then I can use my thumb, push it into that next edge nice flat sealed, run my thumb across to the outside, super flat, nice right there. Same thing as before, work your thumb around that button head screw to completely seal that one in, drop it on the radius all the way out, now I can move up to the next button head. Run your thumb up, next button head, thumb inside the radius, Flatten the tape to the outside, move on to the next one. Seal in that button head, close it in on the flange, run your thumb to the outside, on to the next button head. Now as you get to the end of the tape, uh, I like to use just one finger to unroll it and hold it about an inch and a half or so from the edge of the tape. If you're pulling on that roll and you happen to get to the end before you grab it, uh, it can fly out of your hands and hit the van and it's stuck and you, you got, got a little bit of a problem. You don't have a lot of time to correct those mistakes. So I like to get that roll undone before. Same process, work my thumb around the screw head, get it tightened in on the radius all the way up to the next one, same process. Now, as I reach the outside radius, again, the tape doesn't like to be stretched or pulled and you have to account for a corner radius. So I like to give it as much slack as I can to allow the tape to lay into those contours as flat as it can. 
So again, I'm preparing it by getting it closed in around the button head. And then before I flatten any tape out on this outside edge, I'm gonna allow it to contour to this edge first before I flatten it. The tape will manipulate a little bit, but you've accounted for the radius before it stretches. Then, as we started, you'll finish the same way. Now you've got yourself a nice flat piece of tape and you can pull the backing off before you apply your next pieces. As you can see, all my button heads are completely sealed up to the outside edge of the fan flange. You don't want to run the tape vertical. You don't want to have it come up the edge. So use that edge as your guide for laying the tape down. Your button heads are sealed. You can go back over the corners when you have a little more flex with the backing off. Tighten those down and you've got a nice flat piece of tape. From here, we'll repeat the process going up the sides uh, with a little more notes of how to account for the contoured edge of these raised sections of All right, so as we get to the next contour here, we've got two we have to account for. We just came off the raised side rib. We're gonna come down off that, which is gonna create a contour in the tape, and also coming around the corner, just like we did on the last piece of tape, is gonna happen again. Uh, again, trying to give the tape as much slack and freedom uh, to lay around those corners is gonna be your best option. If you have tension where the tape is trying to pull away from these edges of the corners, that's where over time you're gonna get lift and it gives you the opportunity for leaks. So, as we're coming down off of this, I'm always gonna start by wrapping the button head of the screw first. Once I'm secure there, now I've gotta fit some tape into the flat as much as I can here first, and also come around the side of this contour here. So, I'm gonna lay a little extra on top, then I'm gonna dig my thumb into this ridge and get it to lay flat as quickly as possible. And then I'm gonna account for this outside edge and try and manipulate the air to the front of the tape so I've got no air bubbles in there as well. So now I've got my outside edge accounted for uh, and you can almost see the tape is already pulling to the right. So I can try and get that back by slacking here and manipulating it a little back to the inside, changing the angle of the tape to give myself more slack as I go around this corner. Now I'm right back up to the back edge of this button head and I want to close the button head off, take the contour and then lay it flat. So button head first. That's sealed. I'm gonna give slack in here and allow it to make the corner. Now that I've got those edges, I can work my way forward. Since I have to go down, left, and right, I'm gonna start high and tape low. So I'm stuck here 
I can move up the back edge. And now I've got all this I need to flatten out. And there's your side piece. Remove the backing cover. Repeat the same on the other side. So on this front piece, a lot of crazy contours again. I just started on the button head corner. And I've got to make this radius and then also for the raised roof edge here. Again, giving as much slack as you can. So I lay into this corner here and then I'm letting the tape luff to be able to slack it around that contour. And then usually starting away from the curve to allow all the slack to bunch in here and go ahead and push right through that. And then we're gonna run into some more going across the front here and there's different ways you can lay the tape. I believe I've found the best, but running my thumb up to the next button head, squeezing into that gap, flattening out up to where I've got, doing the same thing. Now this is where we've got a contour to match here. These are the important corners, especially on the front where most of the weather is going to be coming from, that you do not want the tape to be stressed or trying to stretch or pull out away from this cornered edge. So we want the tape to lay flat and just naturally roll over it so there's no stress on the tape. As I do that, you get around this button head here. I'm going to drive up closer to it. Now, as I approach this, uh, having done it before, I know that when I cross that tape uh, or that contour, it's going to want to make my tape turn to the right. And so it's going to bring me away from this edge and I'm going to start to get shallow over here. So to start, I'm going to give this tape slack and work it down towards the left, just a hair, so that I've got slack coming into this corner and I'll stay straight when I'm coming out. So I'll Push it, laying nice and flat, right up against that first contour. You can see the backing bunching up a little bit. That's a good sign because I know I've got the slack to lay it flat. And now I've got that first initial edge made with a little bit of slack on the inside here. It's exactly what I want. So I'm going to lay my tape down over the button head again. And I'm going to let this bunch into the corner and keep trying to drive my tape down a little bit to the left because I know it wants to pull it to the right. I'm going to let all this slack lay flat right into that gap. And again, coming off the back edge, very important that you give the tape slack and let it roll into that contour so it's not trying to pull and lift out of that corner. Still driving down to the left a little bit, or towards me, to the back I should say. I'm going to start with this edge because it's the most stressed position. So slack, I'm going to fold it right into that crease. And then I'm going to bring that fold all the way back to the edge of the van. Now you can see this whole contour, there's been enough uh, slack to allow it to lay nice and loose all the way around these edges. So I know over time, I won't have the tape pulling up away from that edge and allowing water to get in. That's the most important part of the application process is allowing the tape enough freedom and slack to take the edges and the contours so as not to pull itself later on. Even as I'm more going forward after I've gone through this section, it keeps wanting to drive the tape to the right. So as needed, 
you can manipulate the tape a little bit in any one direction to help yourself get back on track. What you don't want to do is have the tape pull so far away from this edge that you reach the edge over here and you only have a finite amount of tape covering the edge or possibly miss a screw head. That's where you see me working from the outside edge in to bring my tape back over and allow myself proper coverage. Back to the complex corner. I'm gonna start to get it to the button head, then I'm gonna fold it over the button head. And before I go into any of these contours, I'm gonna get it around my sharp edge first and then lay it flat outside from there, giving that corner slack so it lays down. Remove the backing strip. And now you've got yourself a completed and sealed fan adapter install. Uh, just a quick point on some of the key points here. Uh, again, don't fight the tape, don't pull it, don't stretch it. Your first inclination might be to thin it out as you lay it down and you want to go the opposite of that. Leave the tape as loose as you can while keeping it up off the van surface until you actually intentionally press it there with your thumb. Allowing the tape to work itself around all the contours and driving, following the line of the fan flange as close as possible uh, seals up all your four corners. Um, that's going to be the best bet in ensuring that the tape keeps the weather out. Now, if you can try to imagine this little valley, if the tape was taut, it'd want to lift out of that edge, and that's where you're going to have a leak. So those uh, going around the front contours and even in the side and the rear are the most important parts, uh, making sure this thing stays sealed for a lifetime. Now we'll move on to mounting the fan, and we will be done. All right, we're on to the final and easiest stage of installing the fan. Um, we've got the adapter sealed mounted, so now we just need to screw on the fan and we're ready to go. Uh, first things first, um, we've got our orientation uh, with the screws to the outside. Sometimes these things come pressed all the way down, uh, and we'll see in a second when we put the fan on, it likes to have them up a little ways. So we just take the tip of the screwdriver and kind of pop these little things up just a hair so there it's easier to get the screws in the side these two sides are already raised so we're good to go there um, now this is the fan out of the box uh, you can see the uh, factory wiring harness there you can just let that hang out what we we'll want to do is manually unscrew the fan so the lid is technically open and that will allow us access to the side holes that we're going to use to mount the fan uh, so just turning the handle counterclockwise until it's maxed out now you can see the fan is in the open position. And as we go to drop the fan through, we're gonna let the wiring harness be to the inside of the flange. We want that to be hanging on the inside of the van uh, once we're done here. Um, the factory flange comes with a gasket and this thing just seats right in there and it seals itself. Uh, and then we'll drive four screws into the side and the fan will be mounted. So again, we're gonna drop that wiring harness inside the van, make sure that's sitting down all the way around. Now we're going to use those four shorter and fatter screws to get this thing mounted to the adapter ring. We like to start all four of them just to make sure we have them going. Uh, sometimes the side corner can lift up before you get there. so. Starting those two on that side. Start these two, and once I know I have all four going, I can tighten them all the way down, hand tight, pretty tight. Don't have to go crazy, but snug them up. Number two Phillips is the best one for these screws. 
got number three. Last one. Number four. And then you can remove the protective cellophane from the top. And there you have a completed Max Air fan install. One thing to note, uh, the last four remaining screws you'll have that came with the kit are these uh, screws with the heads painted white. These are to finish off the interior trim once the kit's installed. This will be the last piece that goes into the ceiling and is what finishes out the inside of the fan. So hold on to these four. You're going to use them to seat the uh, interior trim. Uh, the electrical connections that you get with this uh, you can keep for any other use you may need, but these will not be used with the Adventure Wagon kit. Uh, as they have plugs pre-wired to the ceiling panels uh, and to the fan. You'll end up crimping the connections um, and you won't be using these. This is the rear fan placement for the 144. If you're going to put your fan that comes with the 2.0 kit in the rear of the vehicle, it'll be in bay 5. If you're putting it in the front, it's in bay 2. If you're going to get two fans, obviously you're going to put them in both places. This is where the rabbit on the edge of this uh, fan ring, or the groove, comes into play. It'll go over the flange that's protruding here on the side of the rib, and the edge of this fan ring up here will dead end into that rib itself. And we're going to use the same notches that we used on the front ring to line it up with the hole that is in the center of the vehicle. I like to use a sharpie, and in the center of that hole, draw a line down so that I can still see where the center of the van, van is, even though the flange covers that little hole. So take it with the, the groove routed out, point it up towards the ceiling, and set your, uh, that little notch in the fan ring right on the line that you created. That's centered and you're now able to mark your corners. If it slips a little bit, you can guide it back in. You can also look to make sure you're lined up on the, the all four corners that you made your, your uh, originally. And you're ready to tap your holes so that you can get your saw blade in from the ceiling. And if the sound deadening um, from the OEM sound deadening is in the way, don't worry about it. Just put your dimple right over the top of it. It's not going to make any difference. Okay. So now that we've done that, we'll go ahead. And this time, I'm going to button up my shirt so I don't get any hot metal on my neck. We'll go ahead and punch these holes. to move back up to the roof with Jared and go through the same exact process that we used installing the fan in the front. So it, it's the exact same method. So we're just going to rewatch that initial video and set both fans. Or if you're just setting the back one, you will be doing it once.